Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of finance. You are watching Finance Concepts with Nikhil and today in this session we will be talking about interest rate parity theory. A very very popular theory in the field of forex or I would say in the field of international finance when it comes to financial management. So friends, uh, before I take you to this theory, let me raise a question. Between any two currencies, whatever exchange rate prevails, what do you think? Is this exchange rate going to remain constant over years and years? The answer is no. Let us take the connection between Indian rupee and US dollar. If you make a Google search that what was worth of one US dollar in terms of Indian rupee during 1947, that is the time when India attained its independence. When India was declared independent from the British rule, what was the value of dollar one in terms of Indian rupee? In lots of web pages, you would find that dollar one was equal to exactly rupee one. Yes, my friends, dollar one was exactly equal to rupee one. Whereas some analysts, they argue against this. They say that it was not exactly one, it was little more than one. But we are not to fight whether it was exactly one or little more than one. It was rupee that was as valuable as a dollar. That means if we go with the fundamental fact that dollar one was equal to rupee one in 1947, by the time we have reached 2019, value of a dollar in terms of Indian rupee has gone substantially high, correct? Now, you definitely know what would be the current rate and at any time you make a Google search, you will immediately get to know what is today's rate of US dollar in terms of Indian rupee. So from 1 to, you know, almost 70 rupees per dollar, how did this dollar value go up? How did this dollar value appreciate? There can be lots of factors contributing to this appreciation of dollar or rather I would say devaluation or depreciation of rupee. If you look into this interest rate parity theory, it conveys a very clear signal that the only factor that is responsible for changes in exchange rate is the difference in interest rates prevailing in the two corresponding countries. What I am trying to tell you is interest rate prevailing in India and interest rate prevailing in the United States, if you compare from 1947 till date, you would find that interest rate prevailing in India are generally higher than the interest rates prevailing in the United States. As a result, as per interest rate parity theory, the country in which interest rate is higher than the other country that country's currency will devalue. To simplify the matter, I would say, in India, if the interest rate is higher as compared to the interest rate prevailing in the US, it is Indian rupee that will devalue against US dollar. That is the message conveyed by this theory. In fact, in the earlier classes in Forex, when we have learned how to determine fair forward rate, we have learned an FFR formula, fair forward rate formula. That time, if you look into what made changes between spot and forward rate, you have taken spot rate into 1 plus interest rate prevailing locally divided by 1 plus interest rate prevailing in foreign country. As a result, we are trying to connect the differences in interest rates with the exchange rates. That means the basic cause of exchange rate fluctuation could be the interest rate prevailing in the two respective countries. Let us summarize what we have just discussed. The exchange rate between the two currencies purely depend upon the interest rates prevailing in the two respective countries. To understand this concept much better, let us take an example. 
So, we have interest rate prevailing in India given as 12 percent and interest rate prevailing in the US is given as 7 percent. Whenever interest rates are quoted like this, they should be definitely considered as per annum rates that is annualized rates. So, if this is the given case that interest rates prevailing in the US is just 7 percent per annum and interest rate prevailing in India is 12 percent per annum, this could be a fantastic opportunity for anyone correct. Anyone would want to take advantage of this situation. How? Simply if interest rate is lower in US, borrow in US, bring that money to India correct, convert those US dollars into Indian rupee and invest in India. So, raise the borrowings in the US and make investments in India. Doing so, what will happen? You are borrowing at 7 percent and investing at 12 percent, you would earn a differential interest of 5 percent. Fantastic right? So, no problem you borrow and invest. Once your investment is matured, encash it, repay the loan with interest, you will still have savings of 5 percent on the principal amount borrowed. But do you think this is so simple? The answer is this is not so simple. In fact, I would say as per interest rate parity theory, this is not possible only. Why it is not possible? Definitely, there will be some savings of interest, there will be some extra interest income that you would earn. But what will happen? Suppose at the time you borrowed in US dollar, if that time 1 US dollar was equal to rupees 70, by the time you go and repay, it would not be rupees 70, the price of US dollar would have increased, and that is what again the fundamental aspect of interest rate parity theory. So, let us do one thing whatever we are discussing and uh, we will be finding the same thing summarized over here on screen. Keep paying attention to the screen and we will extend this example ahead. So, what I just mentioned was 12 percent and 7 percent if this kind of interest rate differential exists, anyone would try to take advantage of the situation by borrowing in US at 7 percent per annum and investing in India at 12 percent per annum. Thereby earning the net differential interest of 5 percent. This is not so simple. In fact, as per interest rate parity theory, this is not possible. Now, why it is not possible? By the end of the year, the exchange rate between rupee and dollar would have changed adversely in such a way that the interest rate differential so earned shall be compensated by the exchange loss arising on repayment of US loan. Now, let us do one thing to make our understanding much better, let us extend the above example. Continuing with the basic information that is interest rate prevailing in India and US is 12 percent and 7 percent respectively, let us take one additional information. Spot rate is dollar 1 equals to rupees 64. Now, what would happen if someone is trying to take advantage of the situation by borrowing in the US at 7 percent per annum and investing the same money in India at 12 percent per annum, thereby earning the net differential of 5 percent. So, what will happen? The amount that you have borrowed was dollar 1 lakh, its equivalent rupee value will be obtained by multiplying the exchange rate that is rupees 64. So, 1 lakh dollar into rupees 64 per dollar will give you rupees 64 lakhs in hand and 5 percent of that what you will be earning as differential is parked as rupees 3 lakh 20 thousand. So, you plan to make this gain correct. However, you will not be able to make that gain. It is the upcoming calculation that will make this clear with evidence. But whatever you find on screen need not be written, the same example is given in your textbooks already. Let us move ahead. Let us determine one year forward rate. So, we have learnt earlier that fair forward rate is spot into 1 plus i l upon 1 plus i f. When we substitute these values, what we get is 64 into 1.12 divided by 1.07 and that gives you 
66.9907. So, what appears to be value of dollar one today, that is rupees 64, will not remain rupees 64 after one year. It will be rupees 66.9907. So, what happens to your exchange loss on account of this? Let us try to understand that. So, amount borrowed was dollar one lakh. Add interest at seven percent. That is dollar seven thousand. Total amount payable after one year will be dollar one lakh seven thousand. So, what will happen? Total amount payable by year end will be how much? Total amount payable by year end. This is your obligation. That is principal plus interest, and this is the expected rate of dollar that would prevail by end of the year. And what will happen? Seventy one lakh sixty eight thousand is the amount payable in terms of Indian rupee. So, what happens? Amount payable as per the spot rate. Look into one thing. If there was no change in the exchange rate, if exchange rate would have been same, that is 64, then the amount payable would have been just 68 lakh 48 thousand rupees. So, if you compare how much you are actually paying against what you would have paid if the price of dollar would not have changed, what is the difference do you find? Let us seek. Excess payable due to changes in exchange rate will be 71,68,000 minus 68,48,000 and that is coming to exactly 3,20,000. As per interest rate parity theory, the resulting exchange loss has completely offset the gain made through interest rate differential.